Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know that the data has been missing from the channel for some time. However, I have a ton of maintenance items coming next week. But before we get to those, I have to take care of something that I've been putting off for many years, and that is the leaky vacuum pump on this. So stick around, let me show you how that goes. Okay, so here is the vacuum pump that I got from FCP Euro. It is a Pierberg brand. And you see it is a full unit ready to go. It has the gasket on it. I ordered the next one just in case. Uh, I didn't know that it came with it, but there it is. It does come with a metal gasket. However, I remember that years ago, and I mean years ago, as in 2018, I bought this RKX Tech vacuum pump reseal kit, and I forgot that I had it. <laughs> so before I install the vacuum pump, I actually want to go ahead and try to reseal it. Now, 90% of the oil that comes out of the vacuum pump when it goes bad is because of this big gasket here, which is this bad boy right here. So let me show you what that is. That gasket goes right behind this cover plate here. So it's just four torque screws that hold it in place. And what happens is that over time, obviously being rubber, uh, it does go bad and it dry rot, so it starts leaking. So the majority of the oil that, that leaks out of a bad vacuum pump comes out of there. So what I want to do is replace it clean the area, and then just keep an eye on it. If you guys see in a few months that I do a, a video where I'm replacing this, then we know that obviously this didn't work. But if you don't see a video of me replacing the pump, well, guess what? The trick worked. So that's what I'm gonna try now. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I did buy that reseal kit. It was like $40 on Amazon back in 2018. It's still the same price right now, I checked. And then the vacuum pump I also bought from FCP Euro. So again, not a sponsored video. All right, so the vacuum pump is way down there. It's, it's in a tight area, but it is, it's not impossible to get to. It, um, we just need to get some of this stuff out of the way. What we need to get out first is the engine cover slash uh, air filter assembly. Then we remove the intake pipe going to the throttle body. I'm not going to go into detail as to how to remove the air box because I've already made videos on that. I'll go ahead and link them down in the description. Okay, so the battery does not need to come out or the battery tray. To just do the faceplate, we have enough space to do it. There's the vacuum pump. You see the throttle body there in relation. So all we have to do right now is remove the four mounting bolts for it and get that seal out of there. Okay, so the vacuum faceplate uses T25 screws. T25. Uh, don't be afraid to move the upper radiator hose a little bit. It, it will give you more space, especially for the back ones. And you want to make sure you back them out slowly so you don't warp anything. Just so you guys see how I'm getting to them. Um, the top screws were pretty easy to get to. The bottom ones are more difficult. This one at the bottom, I was able to knock it loose with my little quarter drive ratchet, but couldn't get it out because of the size of the head. So I ended up using uh, a, a T25 screwdriver. I was able to just go in from underneath the tray and I was able to access the screw this way. For the bottom screw, what's happening is that the head of my ratchet is actually touching the shifter cable here. The good thing is that this union right here is just a ball joint. So similar to kind of like your hood struts, for example, uh, they just push in. So we should be able to just pry this up and it should come out and give me the space that I need here. Notice how flattened out that gasket is. No wonder we're leaking so much oil. Here's a new gasket. That's the old one. Look at the height difference, how much it's collapsed. Something you never, ever, ever want to do is spray brake parts cleaner directly into the internals of your engine. So as you're cleaning this area with your brake parts cleaner of your choice, you want to make sure you don't spray there. What I recommend you do is actually spray a rag and then use the rag to wipe the mating surface and the groove where the gasket sits.
Don't be scared to get in there and clean out the oil that's settling at the bottom of the pump because ultimately that oil can contaminate the seal when it goes back on it. So you want to make sure that that area is dry. We want to make sure we put in the new gasket in place and put the face plate back on before the oil starts dripping out to it. Let's get this rag out of here. You just got to walk it in. Ah, there it is. I'm right, going to give it one more clean. And let's bring the faceplate back in. And don't worry about how dirty it is right now. I will clean this afterwards. All right, there's one. Okay, let's just bring down the screws. We're gonna do a proper tightening uh, once they're sitting closer to the, to the bottom. Uh, you wanna make sure you do a crisscross pattern. You do not want to squish this seal. You wanna tighten this to 10 Newton meter, which is about seven foot pounds. I've been working on cars long enough that for that much torque, I don't really need a torque wrench but if you are not familiar then yeah go ahead and go use a torque wrench for it all right guys so the gasket has been replaced so now we have to clean the entire area so we can check it for future leaks you guys see Cleaned up all the stuff that was there. There's still some oil down there, but you know, that's that's minimal. It looks a whole lot better than it did before. And more importantly, I'll be able to monitor it. All right, guys, so you see then that replacing that seal for the cover plate is not that bad. It's a little tight to get in there, but it's not impossible. I was able to do it with just regular hand tools. So I will keep an eye on it now and I'll go ahead and report back on the comments down below as I check on it and I'll let you guys know if I find a leak or when I find a leak, etc. So you guys will be aware of what's going on. Well, one thing to note though, there is one more rubber seal there. The bar fitting that the brake line uses to go down to the brake booster, you see how it's held on there by clips. One, there's one on each side. You can get to the one that's on, on the side of the cover plate but this side here that's up against the engine it's nearly impossible so i didn't replace mine um that may also be a point of leak but maybe the leak from here is so minuscule that it's not worth the time so again it all depends on what what results i see here over time so i will again i'll keep you guys updated with that said guys thank you so much for watching and again i have a lot more maintenance coming for the jetta next week so there's going to be a lot more content coming up for it so stick around thank you guys so much and i'll see you next time